Today we're going to have a look at calculating probability without replacement and how tree diagrams can be used to assist us with this process. So let's begin. Now to begin we need to separate what probability is with replacement and without replacement. So in front of me I've got four coloured balls here, two red and two blue. If I were to select one of these first at random, let's say that I selected the blue ball here, this could be considered my first event. If I was to then replace this back into the pool of selection before I randomly selected another coloured ball, we would consider that to be probability with replacement. However, if I first made that selection of the blue ball, and then I made a second random selection, the selection pool has changed and that we call probability without replacement. So this video is going to concentrate on selecting two balls total one at a time but we're not going to replace the ball after each selection. So let's keep that in mind as we answer the following question. What would the probability be of selecting a red ball and a blue ball in any order? Now we can use tree diagrams to help assist us with this process. So with our tree diagram we start by considering on the first selection what our outcomes could be. Well we could select either one of the two blue balls and we could select either one of the two red balls. In our second selection it changes a little bit. So considering my pool of balls if I selected a blue ball first, the remaining balls could be one of three options. Another blue ball or another one of the red balls. The same thing occurs if I select the other blue ball. I will still have a blue ball left and two red balls that I could select from. However, if I selected the red ball first, there would actually be two blue balls that I could select and another red ball, and, it, and it's the same for the final option. Now the purpose of drawing this tree diagram is so that we can list all the total possible outcomes that are available. So we could get a blue followed by another blue ball. We could get a blue followed by a red, a blue followed by a red, blue followed by blue, blue followed by red, blue followed by red, red followed by blue, red followed by blue, red followed by red, then finally red followed by blue, red followed by blue, and red followed by red. From here we can now calculate the probability of selecting a red and a blue ball in any order. We first need to count the total number of successful outcomes. So let's quickly go through. There is one here, here, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight successful outcomes. Then we need to divide by the total outcomes. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve total outcomes. Now this probability will now simplify down to 2 over 3. Now what's interesting here is we did start with an even number of red and blue balls in the problem. However, when we weren't replacing the selections, the probability of getting one red and one blue in each order is no longer 50-50 in comparison to when we're replacing the ball that it is that. Now the primary reason for that is once I've made my first selection here, when I go to make my second selection, the probabilities of getting a red and a blue ball have vastly changed and this influences the results. So drawing a tree diagram like I have here really helps us in identifying all the possible outcomes that could occur which then assists us in answering the probability questions. So now I would like for you to give it a go. If there were three balls in our problem instead 
and we selected one ball at a time, selecting a total of two balls. What would the probability be of selecting one red ball and one blue ball, once again in any order?